I don't know whether you know how brilliant that is. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody that took that approach. You know, this business is moving pretty much faster than anybody else's. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you're either in front of it or you're getting run of this. Who are you and what can I do to help you achieve the goals that you have? Here we go. Welcome to episode 414 of Control Talk Now, where we talk about all things HVAC and smart building controls, including sales and marketing. My name is Eric Estromquist, and I have some exciting updates for you today. First off, have you seen our newly redesigned website? The design team and I worked very hard and put a lot of thought into how we can make the control trains experience better for our viewers, and hopefully we nailed it. Uh, we wanted a cleaner, sleeker look that was easy to read, easy to navigate, and also offered advertisers the best possible way to share their messages. So now you can not only sponsor an episode like this one, you can also advertise using banner ads to maybe, or maybe use both to reach the global control trends community and give them your message. And speaking of our audience, we've changed our email game. Instead of bombarding you with updates every time you post, we're sending out only highlights, maybe once or twice a week. But let's face it, nobody likes spam. So I promise you that I'll never spam you and I will never, ever, ever share your information with anybody else. And speaking of cool, I recently went to ControlsCon and wow, 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 it was a blast. Scott Cochran and his team really out there themselves this year. I mean, I could go on and on, but I did write a post about it on ControlTrends.com yesterday, which you can check out. So here's also a short clip of me and Scott at the show. All right, man, Eric Stromp was here. Controls Con is winding down. I'm here with Scott Cochran. Dude, big props, man. Well, well, well done. Thank you. Can't tell you how great it is, man. And, Thank you, uh, An industry icon, industry making it happen. Dude, tell me, did it blow you away? It blew me away. I knew it was going to be good, but I think it was going to be this good. So I was blown away by the content, and I was really blown away by the, the comments I got. But the thing that I loved the most was watching the network. And uh, we're so fortunate at Cochrane Supply that we work with so many different people. And I love seeing them all together in one place. Well, you know, it's kind of cool, too, because with your expansion, it's kind of like we've got people from all across the country yeah, coming here. Yeah, we did. And our European fans want to know, when are you going to open in Europe? <laughs> uh, our audience in India wants to know, when are you coming to India? Because, you know, they're when, are you, when are you opening my branch of that's there you go. You heard it here right on Control Trends. <laughs> hey, listen, we're be posting a lot of content about the controls. Con. I know Cochran is. He's got a great marketing guy, Joe Guzman. Joe's going to be posting a lot of stuff. If you couldn't make it, you definitely, definitely want to check the content. Yeah, out. we'll be sharing a lot of our videos. They'll be, they'll be free to the community. So please take some time and join us. And thank you for being here, Mr. Legend. I appreciate you for all of your audience, in case you didn't know. <laughs> We will be highlighting Eric as a legend in this industry in the next two minutes. Well, there we go. Thanks so much, Scott. Appreciate you, brother. Well done, man. This got awesome or what? It was really a great show. And hey, man, stay tuned because uh, I'll be posting some great videos and interviews from the show in the next couple, couple weeks. Our sponsor this week is Controls Group North America. The world of distribution is undergoing an incredible transformation, and if you want to be at the forefront of the change, then you need to join a community that is working towards redefining supply chains. CGNA is that community. By bringing together the best distributors with innovative manufacturers, we are changing the game by finding ways to solve problems, cut costs, and increase market share for our members. As a member of CGNA, you'll have access to exclusive resources, expertise, and knowledge, including access to intermember inventory. As a manufacturer, you have the opportunity to reach over 208 locations with the support of highly trained and motivated CGNA members. Together, we're redefining distribution and creating real value for our customers. So why not be part of something bigger than yourself? Join CGNA and let's ride the waves of change together. 
Welcome to a world where synergy reigns supreme. So if you want to be a sponsor of the show, just click on the link in the show notes. And by the way, if you go like, well, that's really cool, but I don't know how I would create a commercial like that. No problem. I can create one for you. It's like the one I did for Controls Group North America. So hit me up and let's make some marketing magic together. I feel like I say this every week, but I am super, super, super excited about my guest this week. Not only is he a friend, uh, he's one of the most incredible individuals I've ever known. His name is Steven Johnson. He is the vice president of automation and controls and one of my favorite contractors, McKinney's here in Atlanta. Steven, man, thanks for taking some time to talk with me and, and our, our community. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity to spend time with a, an old, new, young friend and uh, take some time this afternoon to talk about some great topics. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to rock it for sure. But I, I guess the best way, Stephen, is you have one of the most fascinating backstories of uh, sort of anybody I know. So walk our audience uh, you know, through, through your journey and, and maybe some of the people you work with along the way and what you did, because you had some interesting jobs. Sure. So I started in the late 1990s. Uh, I grew up in the restaurant business. Uh, and then in the late 1990s, I went to work for Chick-fil-A corporate office as a janitor. And uh, it was young in my life. I wanted to get married and get a good jump start on life. But I realized pretty quickly that you needed a job and you needed benefits and you needed to do uh, all the things that it takes to pull off a family life. And so I, at Chick-fil-A, I was there for 17 and a half years. I did all kind of roles there and ended up leading a lot of their uh, different groups on their corporate campus, including being mentored directly uh, by Truett Cathy and spending some time. As you and I were talking a little bit earlier, I found this picture. I actually keep this on my desk in my office in Atlanta. Look this at is that. me and Trick Kathy in 1997. Wow. I think that was actually at my, uh, what do you call those things, like a, a wedding shower um, right before Sabrina and I got married. So it was uh, cool to call him a friend and mentor. And uh, so I grew up there. And then in 2013. Well, Stephen, hang on one second, yeah. you know, because you know, we have a global audience and, and, you know, and even, you know, I don't know how far Chick-fil-A goes, but for our audience who might not know, um, I mean, if you're in the South, you've been to, if you've been to Chick-fil-A, you know, you know what it's all about. But for people who don't, tell them, tell them what it's about. So when our friends from London or France come over, they're <laughs> definitely going to check this out, right? Sure. So uh, Chick-fil-A was founded in 1946 by Truett Cathy. Uh, post-World War II type entrepreneurial spirit business. Um, basically, in the United States, this guy was the guy that invented the chicken sandwich. And then in 1967, he took it to more of a fast casual type concept and started opening restaurants literally all over the United States. Now they're open. They're starting to open in multiple countries now as part of their growth plan. It's a multi-billion dollar company. Um, and they have done a lot of good. Their their charitable side, their giving back to the community is probably one of the best I've seen. So it was a great company to grow up in, learn about leadership, learn about servant leadership, learn about helping people, and just uh, a great way to grow up in business from one of the real deal leaders that I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, that's a, that's a lot to unpack because Truett Cathy, uh you know, a great leader. And I, I want to talk a about some of the things you learn from him. But one of the things, to give you an example of Truett Cathy and his principles, just from an outsider looking in, I mean, Chick-fil-A is not open on Sundays because I guess, mm -hmm. you know, Truett's a, a fairly religious fellow and he walks his talk, right? Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. So, you know, it, that's a funny story in and of itself because, you know, back in the day, it was absolutely for religious reasons, but it was also something for a very simple reason that all of us leaders can learn from today. And that is if you're already working six other days a week, you got to have a day to rest. Yeah. And, and so it was both rest and faith based and a, an opportunity for him to spend time with his, his family. You got to think about it. This decision was made long before all of us were addicted to our technologies and all that kind of stuff. So if he, if he saw that need to rest, reflect, refresh, you know, back in the forties, certainly we need it today, you know? Well, and, and it shows me that he's thinking about his employees too, because I can tell you one of the things when I go to a Chick-fil-A that I notice outside of the exceptional quality of the food is the people that work there are engaged and they're happy. And it's clear that they're motivated. So 
I, I suspect there was a rhyme or reason to how Stuart did how I suspect there's a rhyme or reason how Truett did that. Absolutely. I mean, everything was it was deliberate and it was on purpose, but at the same time, it was just a very natural outcome of who he was. Uh, just thinking back to that, their their whole model there was based on character, competence, and, and basically charisma. Uh, and, and you see that all throughout their story, obviously character first, and then can they do the job and how well are they going to relate to the people that they're going to serve? And I think that's also a great model that we can use today. True or not, did, at one point in time you were his bodyguard? <laughs> so I don't know that any of us called anything. I, I don't know that's the right terminology back in the day, but I did get to do some very cool stuff. So before Chick-fil-A started having airplanes and all that kind of stuff, Truett did a lot of speaking engagements and uh, I was one of his original drivers. So, you know, I'd do my janitor stuff during the day and then we would go change clothes, jump in a car and drive anywhere in the United States to go do speeches. Uh, but what, you know, that's a, that sounds like an interesting thing in and of itself. But what I really learned early was to take a, a small business card and write down two or three questions because all you, you're a captive audience, right? I've got the smartest, richest dude I've ever met in my entire life in a car sitting beside me for multiple hours at a time. I'm not going to waste this time. So what I learned was always come with two or three uh, questions to something that's going to help me be a much better person and leader as I grew up in business. So wow, that, uh, that, what a rewarding time. Yeah, no, but what a, what a, what a great takeaway. Just that piece right there, Stephen, you know, when you're going to be around successful people, always have one or two questions you can ask. And of course I've got to ask, give me an example, a couple of the questions you've, you asked through it. So I mean, you got to think, I mean, true it, grew up in business at a whole different time. He grew up in a society where, you know, there were issues, there was civil unrest, there was all kind of things going on in our country. And so you, I would ask him questions like, how did you integrate your business? Or, man, you know, nobody else is doing this. Why are you closed on Sunday? Or why have you been business partners with Coca-Cola Company since the early forties and why aren't you looking at somebody else or why would you do the, why would you have the longevity in these business partnerships and relationships? And that, I mean, the answers were just absolutely amazing. I, I literally watched him just uh, so many lives that that guy touched. He was the real deal 24 seven. So. Uh, well, I got, I got, I got to ask because especially in today's market, for example, where we see, you know, vendors changing distributors and integrators changing, you know, partners. I mean, you know, it's a pretty common occurrence. Do you remember what uh, Truett said when you said, well, why have you been with Coca-Cola all these years and haven't looked someplace else? It's real simple. They, when he was a little boy, they gave him a chance. Uh, uh, you got to think about the life that these guys grew up in a post-depression era. Really, you know, he was born in 1921, so he was all through the Depression. And the only way that a, a family could make a living was recycle Coke bottles, buy Cokes, you know, six for a nickel and sell them, you know, six for 10 cents or whatever. So even as a little kid, I mean, he was slinging newspapers and he was doing business with the Coca-Cola company. Same thing with Ford Motor Company. The Ford Motor Company Hateville assembly plant was right across the street from his first restaurant. So for years, 95% of the cars that he bought and sold were for it. And that was hundreds of thousands of cars because he gave cars away all the time. Wow. He'd buy 60 cars at a time and they were all from Ford just because Ford was loyal to his early restaurant that day, you know, that in yeah. that period of time. Yeah. Stephen, you know, it, it's, you know, my dad was like that, you know, he remembered the people that helped him. And I suspect, you know, your dad was the way I think you're that way. Do you, you think that's gone out with the, the with, as the greatest generation sort of leaving our industry? Do you think that's less of a factor now? Or do you think people still sort of remember when people helped them up and, and there's a loyalty factor there? That's a great question. And the reason it's a great question is because we are living through the commodity effect. We're living through the Amazon effect as we speak. So uh, it's interesting. I teach my sales team right now in 2023 that your goal as a sales professional, a sales account manager, not just a salesperson is to help that new young building engineer 
to to grow into their career because hopefully that person's going to stick with you for 20 years. Yeah. Um, so we definitely teach and model that here. I do not want vendors. I want business partners. Yeah. It takes so long to onboard a new vendor, if you will, or a new product line or, or whatever it is. And we'll do it, but you're so much better off, both from the people side and the vendor side, to take care of the ones you got and to nurture that relationship and not just view everything as disposable anymore, you know? Well, yeah, I, I think you and I have that in common. And I think when we first met, I mean, that was one of the first conversations, you know, we had is we're, we're, we were both looking for a partnership. And then I think we were mm-hmm. just both re- really upfront about what that partnership would look like. And I think we both, part of that for us, and, and this is, I'm this way with my clients, I think you are with yours is, I'm never going to ask you to do something that's not in your best interest. And, you know, if you have to do mm-hmm. something else, then, you know, I understand because I'm in it for the long haul with you, right? Well, I also remember, I mean, and this is one of the things that I've stolen from Stromquist quite a bit. So good leaders steal things from other people. And by that, I specifically mean great ideas or great leadership and business truth. And the specific thing that I'm stealing from you was practice good care. Hmm. Uh, and I, I remember you, you telling me the story of how you got that directly from your father, but that's so important. I mean, it's important for your customers. It's important for your team. Our basically in the heritage of our company, um, John McKinney's father, David, he said it like this, treat your employees the way you want them to treat your customers. Nice. And so just thinking about that and the other, the other leg to this stool that I think about is trust. So you either trust somebody or you're always suspicious. Those are the only two options, right? So, uh, and trust is earned, Um, you know, thinking about just our history. I don't think that we've necessarily had a great big fight, but we've had heated discussions on what's going to be best for the marketplace, both of our businesses. And that's where trust and businesses get strengthened is when they are working to solve complex issues and grow, grow our businesses, you know? Well said. Uh, it, well said. There you go. Well, I'm I am totally screwing this up, but I'm so excited talking to you. I'm really jumping ahead. So where I left you last, you were true at Kathy's driver, bodyguard. Uh, there you go. So where did you um so so what happened next? Wow. So throughout the two thousands, I guess, you know, when you ride around in a car with somebody for a long time, you learn a lot about them and both he and me. So I did some restaurant work for him. I did some innovation work for him. I did a lot of work around his campus. I did a lot of work at their homes. Um, But in 2013, life was changing for me. I have a very big family, and we were in the middle of adopting children, more children. And I just realized that I was no longer in a place where I needed to give so much of my attention to business. So I made a very abrupt right turn change. Um, back in the late nineties, I had done a lot of building maintenance type stuff. As I mentioned earlier, done a lot of automation controls, electrical, plumbing, heating and air, you, you name it, all the things you do when you take care of properties. And so I actually, a, a mutual friend of ours, Fred Gordy and I, uh, we were talking and he's like, man, you really should just come check out McKinney. So I came to McKinney almost with a blindfold on. Uh, I was looking for a change and I said, let's do it. It's just one of those things you wake up and sometimes you just got to jump. So I jumped, uh, started as an entry level field supervisor here at McKinney's and spent quite a bit of time just growing up a little bit in this business, learning our craft, learning our teammates, learning the people, forget the rest, learn the people. You learn the people, you're in great shape, right? Products are going to come and go, but your core people, that's where it's at. So that's how I got here. And then, I mean, over a very short span of time, our business is evolving. I mean, if you, one thing, if you are a direct follower of Control Trends, Eric, his team, his family, you know, this business is moving pretty much faster than anybody else's. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you're either in front of it or you're getting run over. So, well said. Um, well th- said. That's kind of where we've been. I want to, I want to hop back and get some, some more, um, I want you to expound upon learn the people. I think that is absolutely brilliant. I think at the end of the day, whether it's a vendor customer relationship or employee employee relationship, leader employee, at the end of the day, it's, it, I, I believe it, it's back to, it's always a people business. If your people skills are good, you're going to be successful. So when you talk about you learn the people for our audience out there, 
can you walk them through a couple of um, examples of how to do that? If they go, that sounds like a great idea, but how do I do that? Sure. So just reflecting a little bit back on our conversation earlier, one of those questions that Truett Cathy answered for me was, he said, look, Stephen, I'm not in the chicken business. I'm in the people business. So you, you got to start there. The next thing would be when I came here, what I realized is talking about trust earlier, why should these 75 men and women trust me? They don't know me. As far as they knew, I just sold chicken just a few weeks earlier. I was frying fries and cooking chicken. What did this guy know about people? What did he know about automation and control? So what I realized early was I had to have 75 lunches and I had to have it pretty quick. And I could only ask two questions. Uh, and, and it was, it really came to, down to this. Who are you and what can I do to help you achieve the goals that you have? Wow. And, and I literally, that first year I crowned the company in expense reports because it was a breakfast, a lunch, a coffee, and it, literally every day uh, with at least 75 people. Cause that's the only way to get it done. Dude, dude, was, but dude, 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 just stop for a second. I don't know whether you know how brilliant that is. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody that took that approach. And for our audience out there, I just want to really reiterate, man. I mean, who are you and how can I help you accomplish your goals? Dude, that's... So think about that. If I, if I would have tried to have those meetings in a sterile office or cubicle, that's a totally different... That, that feels like you did something in high school and it's time to pay the tax, yeah. right? So you, you solve most of your problems across the table from somebody. If you're doing it right, I don't care what job it is, what role it is, what company, what product, um, things get solved with the right hand of fellowship and breaking bread. And I personally drink a lot of coffee. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Well, I tell you, if, you, if I, I can attest firsthand, if you ever get to have lunch with Stephen Johnson, if he ever invites you to lunch, <laughs> take him up on the invitation. Cause not only will you have some of the most interesting conversation you've ever had and, and one of the best times you have, you also eat the best food you've ever had because Stephen knows at least two things that I'm aware of. One is automation controls. Well, let's say three people and good food. <laughs> nice. Well, I, uh, unfortunately that hasn't helped me with my waistline, but it has helped a lot in business. We'll give it that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So you, you took, you took over at McKinney's and, you know, I talked to um, Rob Allen and I've talked to I've had some other leaders on the show where, you know, as a, as a new leader, you come in and, you know, you've had some history with these people, but uh, as I said on, uh, on another episode, I mean, anytime you're asked to come in and lead a new group, it's typically not good news, meaning that uh, either, you know, the pe person leading before you has done really well and has got promoted, in which case, not only are you expected to at least maintain or don't screw that up, you're also being expected to improve or the other leader wasn't doing the job, in which case, you're coming in to uh, fix it and get people to do stuff the previous leader couldn't do. And generally, you know, people, even good people don't necessarily like change. So you step into the role at McKinney's and a uh, big company, successful building automation controls company. You, you, I guess the first order of business, you did your 75 lunches. But after that, walk, walk people that might find themselves into a similar, a similar situation where now they've been thrust into leadership and the team they're leading maybe is not necessarily too happy about them being there. So, I mean, the, 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 the baseline that you have in all of this is you've got people. Uh, and every single morning, most people that you're going to meet out there, they get up and say, I want to be successful today. I want to do a good job. I want to go home feeling like I accomplished something today. So, you know, backing up just a little bit, I think hopefully – whoever's listening to this chose well. It was not an accident that I came to McKinney's. I was McKinney's customer for years and years and years before I came here. Um, so if you've got a, a, a great brand and a great family that you already work for, you've already got some pretty high fences, really. It, and so, again, the key to the whole thing is you've got to find this group of people that want to be successful. They, they, they're already experts in their craft. Somebody else did that for me. There are really, really smart and talented people here at this organization. So all I've got to do is help to point them in the direction that we all know we should go. Let me tell you, uh, I'm, an, I'm an Apple fanatic. I'm a nerd. I get it. I own it. 
But I mean, think about the most famous Steve Jobs quote that floats around out there. You don't hire good people and you start telling them what to do. You leverage the people that you have to tell you what you should be doing. Nice. They're, nice. They're so smart. What am I going to come in and tell these people? Yeah. I flipped chicken a week earlier, right? Yeah. So these guys are the experts. All I have to do is let's let's take what we already have and just apply basic customer service. And let's take the best product that we can find. Go back to the restaurant days. The best ingredients we can find with the best craft people that we can find, giving out the best customer service that we can give. And I don't care what industry you're in. That is the only recipe for success. Period. It makes, makes so much sense, Stephen. And it especially makes sense because to me, it's really two steps from what I've heard of you. The first is you get to know them and you ask that question. What is it that you want to accomplish? And, and, to, and like you said earlier, and then the second one is, then you just empower them to do it, right? Sure. And I mean, please, you got to understand, this is an intimidating story. I mean, here I am, it's me against 75. And I mean, it literally felt like that. Who am I? I'm walking into people that are experts in their field. And I'm trying to get my bearings and see what's actually going on in this organization. Where, where are we? Right. Because, I mean, you know this as well. You, you've got to figure out where you are before you can even bother to figure out where you're going. Yes. Yes. So uh, that was an intimidating time. But, and man, it was so rewarding. And some of the deepest friendships I have came from 75 Lunches in 2013. Wow. Well, and maybe that's the title of our, our section. 75 our section Lunches. Today. 75 Lunches I love in 2013. It. I love it. Um. You know, Stephen, what I also hear embedded in this is, and, and Rob mentioned this, Rob Allen from, you know, who's running the Stromquist and Company for us now, he, he mentioned the importance of humility. And I, I, you know, and Rob sort of defined it. It's not like, ah, oh, shucks. It's more along the lines of being willing to ask for help and, and say when you don't know. And I, I get from you that, you know, I've always thought of you as a very powerful dynamic leader, but I've always thought of you as, as a very humble person at the same time. Describe your definition of humility for me. Well, I think it's what you just said. I mean, the most there, there's two power, two of the most powerful statements that a leader can make. Let's say that again. There are two very powerful statements that a leader can make. Number one is the word no. One no opens up a thousand yeses. So it's all about your priority and you getting to be in control of what is important for you, your family, your business, that kind of thing. But with regard to humility, it's exactly what you just said. It is being able to say, I do not know. It might be paired with, let's go find out together. That's probably the most powerful pairing because then you both learn something. Yeah, but that's great. Uh, again, man, especially in this industry, there is nobody that can know everything. There's just not. And I think the most powerful companies are the people that have learned how to use a telephone. And yes, I said telephone. I didn't say iPhone. I didn't say all these other things, but you learn things by calling in your lifeline, right? And having somebody on the other end of that phone that'll answer. Um, that's probably one of the greatest gifts we can give each other in business is just answer the freaking phone. Yeah. Um, well so said. being willing to say, I don't know, man. And let me tell you, there's not a day goes by that I don't make that statement. I do not know the answer to this. We've got to go figure this out. Cycle into McKinney's automation, what you guys do different and sort of what's your vision and, and our, for our, our end users, our, our consulting engineers, our building owners that listen to the podcast, what, what do people expect from their integrator and what makes McKinney's different? Sure, sure. So, I mean, we are currently in a very unique time to be in any kind of automation and technology business. Uh, you've got fantastic new news stories coming every single day about artificial intelligence and about all the newest, latest, greatest things. My job is to move from ideation into production, to actually do the things that everybody else is talking about. Uh, so I, I love where we are. I mean, you're always going to have your need for people that put in thermostats and lighting control and that kind of thing. But it is, it, it, it's a great time to be in this space because it's so much more. Uh, we also are in a time when Again, back to people, that's your most important resource that you have, and there is scarcity there. So how do I leverage automation, not to replace people, 
but to supplement and augment the human factor in operating all these wonderful facilities that we have in the southeastern United States. So specifically, what we're doing is we are building, creating, leveraging, integrating a multiplicity of new technologies today to make these buildings run more efficiently uh, and just better. I mean, I think back to the 90s when I was trying to manage buildings. And the rule just was the phone rings, you get in your car and you go. Now you can run a 60 story building from your iPhone sitting on the beach. So it's just a fantastic time to be in this space. But I would say this, take care of the customers, put in the best possible products that are in the marketplace, and then let's make the products that exist and the new stuff that's coming out be integrated to its absolute fullest potential possible. There's yeah. so many features to these products. You know this. You're the product guy, right? Right, right. There's so many features we're not even using yet, right? So it is very important to let's see everything that we want this this property to experience. Uh, and it It's just a great time to be in this business. Well, and, and I'll tell you, Stephen, something too at Stromquist. I mean, we're pretty selective about the integrators we work with and the products we handle. And, and I think and part of the reason we pick you guys, and when I say that, it's because you can promise an owner anything. You can say your product does stuff and maybe even believe it does, but it hadn't been tested. My take on McKinney's and our other integrators is if you guys look at an owner in the eye and say, this is going to work, it's gonna, you know it's going to work. You're not testing stuff out. You're not doing theory on them. It's proven technology. You do the testing on your own time and your own work. That's a fair statement? It is. But I mean, there, there's an additional piece to it. And here's what it is. And this is painful. So here we go. I had a reminder just last week of a property that we built in about 2014. And I literally found out last week that there are some components in logic and algorithms that have never worked right. So I bet because you know me and you know our business, what is my answer? You guys are going to go fix it. We're, we've, we've got a team <laughs> of people $25,000 deep in yeah. making this thing that we told them in 2014 was going to work right, it's going to work right. Yeah. That's just, that is in a nutshell who McKinney's is, is it's going to work right. I love it, man. I love it. Before I ask you a couple of closing questions, how do people get hold of McKinney's? Oh, absolutely, man. So you can always send me an email at stephen.johnson at mckinneys.com. You can always call our dispatch. And I'm going to give you this number right here in front of me. Our dispatch line is 404 404- Six two two five thousand. That's a twenty four hour number. Four zero four six two two five thousand. Again, you know it's our job to take care of your property, not just from eight to five every day. So we're here for you. I think over Christmas, we you know we had the great flood of two thousand twenty two this past year. I think Christmas Day we dispatched seventy one technicians here in Atlanta on Christmas wow. Day that were willing to leave their family. Look. We're serious about the customer thing, okay? These are just, even though our name is not on the deed, these are just as much our buildings as they are our customers. And so we're very passionate about that. You know, Stephen, I've been doing, but my dad did business with um, uh, David McKinney's dad. You know, I've done business with, uh, you know, John and... um, and I've known McKinney's people over the years. They come on the counter. I talk to them, and you're absolutely right. I mean, to a T, I don't think they pass muster with you guys unless they have that sort of attitude. And and uh, so I applaud you guys for that. I applaud you for you know carrying the torch forward and moving automation to the next level. And I, I kind of want to end with, uh, I know you're a voracious reader like most leaders are. Uh, give, give our community a, a book recommendation, if you would. Oh, wow. So that is very timely. Literally last week, I was on vacation and I got to read six books last week because I had a lot of free time. This guy right here, I actually, here's a funny story. Rob Allen gave me this book. Nice. And The Power to Change. And it basically, it starts with, this was the statement that struck me. It said this, um, basically, all of the small things By that, I mean training and things that you put into being a leader that you do in private are what makes you great in public. Nice. So you got to think about it. 10,000 hours of practice before you can become an expert. Uh, So you you, got to think it's the little things, the small habits 
that we as leaders do every single day before we're really qualified to talk to anybody about this business we call leadership. Well, and, and, and I think what I hear you saying in that is, is for our younger listeners out there, start now. You don't have to be actually leading the group, but show up as a leader underneath people. I mean, do your job, have the integrity, develop these traits. Because you and I both know, I mean, you can meet somebody and you know right off the bat when you look them in the eye if they're solid, right? And if they're solid, then you're going to do business with them. And I, and I think that's the best thing you can do for your business is have integrity like McKinney's does and like you do. Make sure your people are in a position that they can do the right thing and the, the business will follow. And trust them to do it. I mean, that, that's, the, that's another piece is you hire fantastic people and all you do is give them the right training and tools and get out of the way. All right, buddy. I'm going to ask uh, you to yeah. do this before before we end it. You got to take your camera. Let's let's show our community what the <laughs> you know what the enlightened executive and smart building controls office looks like. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, so here's the short version. So this is our desk. Notice books, books. more books. Yeah, uh, so yeah. Well, hang on. Books, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what what what's in the cabinet? Is that where you keep your Jack Daniels? Oh no, fresh out of Jack Daniels. <laughs> that is. Uh, probably more books that I couldn't have fit on the shelf. Got you. Okay. And you take the spin. This is for when meetings get boring. You grab a guitar. There you go. Do a little Love practicing. It. Love it. That kind of thing. So that's the nickel tour of my. <laughs> well, hey, my you got a keyboard that. in there too, don't you? Yeah, that's right there. There you so go. There you go. Well, what I would basically say is that and five dollars will get you a cup of coffee. So. Well, I, I, I think, and you know, <laughs> we we can't do this on this show, but if you ever get a chance to meet Stephen, he. Uh, he does a tremendous amount in the community. He's a musician, a, a really great musician. Believe it or not, our buddy we mentioned earlier, Fred Gordy, is a great musician too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I encourage you, if you ever get a chance to sit down and talk to this man, don't miss the opportunity. Stephen Johnson, man, mm -hmm. thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Thanks for the time, man. It's, uh, there is comfort in being uncomfortable. So it was a fun day. <laughs> and thanks for taking some time to spend with me today. Okay, so that's another week on Control Talk. Now, a special thanks to our guest, Stephen Johnson. He was awesome. Next week, my guest will be Fred Gordy. But until then, remember, be bold, stay in control, stay relevant. Subscribe to the newsletter. And remember what one of my favorite writers of all times used to say, buy the ticket, take the ride. We'll see you next week.